Well, good evening, everybody. This is Galen Norris here. Uh, this will be my first ever uh, NASCAR review uh, on YouTube here I'm making. Uh, as we all know, the NASCAR season kicked off uh, the, just yes this past Sunday with the uh, 2020 Bush Clash at Daytona. Uh, as we also know, it turned into a wreck fest. Uh, the first 90% uh, of the race um, was pretty much just a follow the leader, uh, single line racing, kind of testing fuel mileage uh, and seeing how the cars are going to run. And then with 10 to go, Joey Logano and... Uh, Kyle Busch opened the can of worms, uh, got together after Logano had blocked uh, too much and uh, ended up hooking bumpers, got turned down into the uh, pinch between uh, Hamlin, did Bush and uh, ha Bush got pitched between uh, Logano and uh, Hamlin and came up uh, upon trying to save it and uh, caught Brad Keselowski and ruined his day. Uh, then on the ensuing restarts, uh, they couldn't even get off the start-finish line. Uh, many cars got destroyed in that wreck, uh, which was quite a shame. Um, some pretty good cars. Uh, they were having good days. Um, pretty shameful. I mean, the, it's never good to wreck on the start, you know, the drop of the green flag, but it does happen. Uh, evidently, in my opinion, somebody must have spun their tires or somebody was trying to hold, lay back and another car wasn't anticipating it. Um, so, I mean, that was about the only two things that could have really caused a wreck like that. But, it, like I said, it's a shame it happened. Uh, we all hate, we all hate, as racers, we all hate wrecking on restarts. Um, then after that, uh, Denny Hamlin cut a tire um, after the next restart, um, going down the back uh, and ended up collecting majority of the field. Uh, in that, all but six cars were involved. And then all of a sudden again, after another restart, that is when... Uh, Chase Elliott and uh, Kyle Larson got involved in a wreck and again damaged some more cars uh, and then they were down to six. Um, now a lot of people would say well it was a good finish of the race which don't get me wrong it was but something I question is how does a car as damaged as that 20 car was of Eric Jones manage to win the race and handily might I add uh, logically, in any racing terms, when you have a car that's aerodynam aerodynamically destroyed in terms of this car with the front end pretty much in a box and squared up uh, with a big hole in it in the front end, uh, they just don't go anywhere. Uh, you can't keep a draft or nothing, especially when you didn't tape them or anything and can't smooth them off again. Um, as you can see, Denny Hamlin was just pretty much laying on him uh, with the bumper the whole time. So, I mean, it was just clearly a horsepower push to the end so kind of what makes me wonder is with these other cars and then with what Brad Keselowski had said at the care center that nobody was going to catch a Toyota do they possibly have a horsepower advantage that everybody's caught on to um but not able to do anything about possibly who knows uh that would be my guess uh just to, for the way the race ended and as bad as that car was damaged there's just no way aerodynamically considering the three car itself and the six prior to the contact on the back straightaway in the last lap uh, would have been aerodynamically well enough shape that they should have been able to you know run past just blow past that 20 car and not even not even think about it um, but they didn't uh, but also Dylan didn't help that situation by rubbing on the six car coming down the back straightaway going into turn three uh, and pretty much ruining the uh, fenders on the uh, Ryan's car. They said it was an engine, but I seen the tire smoke uh, prior, just after the contact, and I seen the movement in the car in the replays I watched. So I'm pretty sure it was a cut tire that was going down on uh, Newman's car. And that, uh, so I mean, I felt bad for Newman there. Uh, and like I say, it was a good finish to the race. Don't get me wrong, um, but as a racer, it kind of makes you wonder. Um, as far as what it would mean for the 500 hard to tell but i say it's going to be probably at least an 80 80 to 85 percent of the race will be run uh, with the exception of the stage ends of the stages will be pretty much run single file maybe double file but they're not going to really be doing anything crazy no fancy moves um because they're just not going to take the chances they're going to try to go a few miles they're going to try to cut the uh cut stops down as much as they can um try some strategy for the 
uh, stages. I mean, that's about all they're going to do. And then the last, I suppose, the last 30 to 20 laps, then the business is going to pick up. Probably going to be a lot of wrecks. Um, I wouldn't be actually half surprised if at least half the field will not see the end of the race by the time, or will not cross the finish line running uh, before there's 10 to go. Um, and then probably at the end, you'll probably maybe, there might be 10 or 15 cars left at the end, I think, of the day. That'll maybe be running on the track, uh, various laps, you know, from being on the lap to being laps down. Um, so that to me don't make for good racing. It makes for entertaining racing, but as a racer, it's not good racing. I mean, we don't want to go out there tearing up cars. Even on the dirt level where I race, we're not aiming to tear up race cars. I mean, we want to keep them on piece. They're very expensive pieces of equipment. We want them to be maintained, and they're hard to maintain. So we don't want extra work every week, you know, fixing on things and having to do this and that just to get back to the track. We want to be able to kind of kick back, relax, and go, what kind of adjustments do we really want to make? And NASCAR is no different. Uh, the only advantage is they got many more cars and bigger budgets. Um, so... As far as that goes, I mean, that's my review of what I saw in the clash. Um, you know, with the upcoming duels uh, that are going to be run on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, I don't know, you might not learn a lot because you are going to have guys trying to race into the field, but you're going to have guys going, well, I don't want to ruin my starting position, especially if you are a uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. or an Alex Bowman. You don't want to make any mistakes that would cost you your front row starting spot. Uh, so they're not going to race overly hard. Everybody else is pretty much locked in. So, I mean, there's not going to be a lot of chances taken. Uh, but if you're a Daniel Suarez or a Reed Sorensen, you're going to take chances. I mean, you have to because you have to race your way in. Um, so there might be a benefit to a couple of them. They might get in that way. Uh, I'm not sure. But that could also cause some wrecks and take out some big names. Uh, so who knows? Um, as far as the packages go, I'm happy with the spoiler just because now you, the drivers can see through it so they shouldn't run each other over into the pits anymore um, like what happened last year and prior years. They should be able to see the hand signals and communicate. Um, but other than that, I mean, I am not what I would say really fond of the package uh, as far as the racing. Um, but, you know, time will tell. I hope uh, this year NASCAR can get their things straight so they can get some good people in the seats again because that's why dirt racing is starting to take off versus uh, NASCAR is because the dirt racing we offer good racing week in and week out no matter where you go from the local dirt track series all the way up to Lucas Oil light models, the World of Outlaws light models the sprint cars modifieds, uh, midgets I mean there's just up top to bottom I mean we're able to put on many shows around the country that are just excellent shows every week um, so I think that's kind of what NASCAR is searching for, but I just hope they don't reach for the gimmicks. Uh, they already changed the stages again, coming out with a new car now in 2021. Um, but I just hope they, you know, they just see, see their mistakes and, uh, and go back, you know, correct them. Um, so the lower downforce packages at, uh, you know, Dover, Mile Tracks and less. They should have an all right effect. Uh, Dover, probably not as much. Dover might be a more tricky of a track to handle just because of the high speed and the banking. Um, you could lend yourself to maybe some more tire issues uh, just because you're going to have to lean on them tires just that much more on the right side just because the as loose as the car could get, you know, you're going to be always putting more pressure on your right side tires. Um, so that could lead to a maybe... Uh, a few more right front blowouts um i hope not uh, i'm hoping it's better racing maybe they get a little more loose they won't be able to flat foot them through the corner but they only caught only fix to the flat footing is you're gonna have to put more horsepower back in the cars it's not necessarily downforce it's how much power you're putting in the wheels that create your problem um you can have less downforce and still have less horsepower and still drive it but if you have more horsepower less downforce well then as we all know you're it's hard to put that traction down, which means you can somebody can burn up their tires, you know, by pushing hard early, and then somebody can that's able to manage their manage themselves in their uh, so like a Kyle Larson or a uh, Ryan Newman who raced dirt, they know how to kind of manage their tires and keep them from you know cooking, 
in that and have something left near the end of a run. But that's my opinion on that from what I experience in dirt racing. So, I mean, uh, take that for what you will. Um, the other thing that I want to say is congratulations to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on winning the pole with the number 47 car of JTG Dougherty Racing. Um, I talked to a friend yesterday, and we both agreed that it's a good car. Always has been. It's just been kind of bitten by bad luck. So I'm hoping that with a new, uh, a renewed chance, a fresh start uh, for Stenhouse, that maybe he will resurrect that 47 car. It will get back to running competitive, you know, and that. And will he win a race? Eh, maybe. I mean, super speedways, he's got the opportunity. Um, but I'm just hoping he runs competitive enough that maybe he can even just race his way into the 16 car field. Uh, for the championship, you know, even just on consistency. Um, to me, that's a better signal of how well you're doing versus just wins is how much, how consistent are you? Are you consistently running well? Um, as Matt Bennett, D. Benedetto showed in the 95 car last year that, yeah, he ran up front, but he was consistently, you know, finishing up, you know, near in the top 15, top 20 consistently. And that's what I want to see as a racer i don't not necessarily worried about the wins right now as much as just you know lay down a basic consistency and get used to that and then you can start chasing the wins so so congratulations to that 47 car uh for winning the poll uh, i hope it leads to good things for him and that and likewise i wish for good luck for chris busher in the 17 car over at roush fenway and that that fresh start maybe will really spear will really spur him to great things as well um as far as what I've got coming up here for recording, I'll probably see if I can review the uh, Daytona Duels, kind of talk about that some, see what I see uh, with the racing and what happens, uh, what maybe is coming along for the Daytona 500. Um, and then I will uh, also record a uh, video after the 500, uh, kind of just giving a rundown of what I think, uh, what we have coming up next at the next track where the NASCAR is heading off to and that. Uh, and then also in the future when the dirt track season around here starts I'll be up at I-94 Speedway in Fergus Falls, Minnesota just about every week racing uh, with a friend of mine and his late models so we will uh, I'll uh, record what I can uh, in the pits and then I'll also try to talk to uh, some of the drivers and other crew members uh, that win, and, win during the evening in the other divisions, try to record some of them uh, if I can uh, in fact, speaking of that, I got Ryan Sider Racing's number 67 uh, hat on here right now. So, uh, shout out to Ryan Sider Racing, RSR Racewear, and that, or uh, Racing Apparel. Uh, so, uh, I hope to, hopefully, he can get in victory lane with the street stocks on this year and uh, get to interview him, a uh, good friend of mine. So, just keep in con uh, touch. Uh, hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll have more racing content. I'll also cover IndyCar and Formula One. And when I have a chance, as well as Lucas Oil Late Models and the uh, World of Outlaw Late Model Series uh, when I can. And that, uh, those will probably be kind of a weekly deal uh, when with information I can, you know, acquire during the week. And that, so uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope you find this content interesting. Uh, probably tomorrow night we might talk about some more of the uh, racing, uh, if I get time. Uh, kind of talking about the race cars and what I think NASCAR should maybe do to uh, improve the racing, just using my knowledge from being around race cars as well as uh, some models of what I have of the current suspension system and what they used to run in the year of the 2000s. So, y'all have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.